created live on Fireside. Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and it looks like the gang has finally gotten back together right here, live on Fireside. So in honor of the regulars all traveling back to their computers to be together, let's share our best travel hacks. Even better, let's share them game show style. So let's meet today's contestants. First, a woman who's traveled across the USA from Nashville. From Afford Anything, it's Paula Pant. And a man from Texas with a penchant for overpriced steak and vertically striped shirts from this podcast, it's OG. And from LenPenzo.com, it's Pat Sajak. (laughs) That guy's busy learning how to turn his own letters, so it's just Len Penzo again. And don't you worry, I'll make sure to break up this game show with some of my old-time radio trivia. And now, a guy who put the hack in travel hacking... It's Joe Saul Sihai. Leave it to you, Doug, to deliver the compliment on a Friday. How are you, my friend? Ready to ready to do the weekend? Ready to do the Yes, in fact, I am ready to do the weekend. Absolutely. We're going to start it off with some great travel tips. I am Joe Saul Sihai, Average Joe Money on Twitter and across the virtual card table from me because I'm in Cleveland today and he's in the basement. Mr. OG is here. In my vertically striped shirt. <laughs> Absolutely. You got to have a vertically. Isn't there, isn't there a contract for dads that you got to wear that? It's uh <laughs> What's funny is I do have lots of vertical striped shirts, believe it or not. <laughs> Doug is not wrong. He is he is not, not wrong. I definitely have a lot of vertical striped shirts. And a woman who uh, all day was texting me about how she was probably going to make it, maybe, maybe not, Paula Pant from Afford Anything is here. Here I am. I came through, and uh, you know what? There... I, there never should have been any doubt. No I, doubt. When I set my mind is to do something, I make sure it happens. She got here with 17 minutes to spare. I, I all, did. All set. I made it. You traveled, have traveled quite a bunch. You ready to do some travel hacks today? Oh, I think I am going to ace this, win this, bring it. Oh, and to Paula's point, by the way, we're playing a year-long competition between our three competitors for trivia. And normally, it's a one-point day. Today is a two-pointer day, like a basketball layup. It's actually going to be more like uh, two stakes down at the Sizzler day. And the score so far, just to bring a little heat to this thing, OG has 11. Paula is in second. I can't believe Paula's in second with 10. And the man we're about to introduce next is in last, but he could be in first by the end of the day, deep under Los Angeles in his bunker. Mr. Len Penzo's here. I, you know, I feel that uh, with Paula here now, I was hoping Paula wouldn't make it only because she's the travel queen. <laughs> and, and my limit, you know, my knowledge of travel is limited to, you know, taking kids in a minivan and, and uh, you know, staying at the uh, Red Roof Inn. So well, so hopefully uh, I can I can dig deep into whatever I've learned about traveling over the years. Look at this, kids. It's the subdivision next door. <laughs> but, Dad, we've been here 16 times. <laughs> It's so great. Let's get going, Joe, because I'm I'm eager to be embarrassed on this show tonight. Ah, uh, uh, let's absolutely do that. And that is the way Len that's Len's battle talk right there. Under promise, <laughs> over deliver. It's coming, everybody. We got Len here, we got Paula here, we got OG and Doug. We also have a live audience here on our fireside uh, where we're doing this live. And by the way, everyone on fireside, the way that you join in today is a couple things. Number one is normally we have to mute the sound effects because people think it's us that's laughing and clapping we're not going to do that today laugh clap hit those buttons whenever you think it's appropriate and uh but but do it responsibly because we don't want we don't have to take it away from you (laughs) that's number one if you pop the little button above your head you can chat about the show uh we're not going to have anybody on stage today but if you have travel hacks you think should be included make sure that you hit that button so and by the way next time if you're not with us live on fireside and you want to be here next time just head to either our facebook group or our newsletter stackingbenjamins.com forward slash stacker and we'll make sure that you have a link to get here and join us live all right we got everybody let's do 
a game show. But first, hey, stackers, pay off your credit card in full like you should every month. Well, if so, you want to hear something amazing? Discover matches all that cash back you earn on your credit card at the end of your first year automatically with no limit on how much you can earn. How amazing is that? In fact, it's even more amazing because of all the places where Discover is accepted. 99% of places in the U.S. that take credit cards. So when it comes to Discover, get used to hearing yes more often. Learn more at discover.com slash yes. 2021 Nelson Report. Limitations apply. And now we're ready. Let's get this thing started. Can't have a game show without cheesy game show music, can we? So our piece today comes to us from, uh, well, I can't tell you where it comes from yet. I'll tell you at the end of today. But this particular publication has 22 ways to travel for less money. In fact, it's 22 secrets to save money on travel. Everybody wants to take that perfect vacation, but planning on a budget can be hard. So hopefully between our three contributors and this piece, we're going to have some great info for you. First round, you're going to win one point for your answer. Second round, you'll get two points for the answer. And we're going to start with the man who's in third place. Mr. Len Penzo is going to kick this off. Len... 22 secrets to save money. You say you're not good at this, but you, there's 22. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep. Okay. That's good. What do you think? Um, well, what would be the probably the, uh, gosh. Um, and by gosh, the way. He, right. he is so terrible. <laughs> 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 and while he's thinking about this. Uh, While he's thinking about this, it doesn't matter if Lens is good or bad. It's whether this particular publication put it on this particular list, which causes some consternation. Okay, okay, I've got it. Use use a travel credit card. Is use a travel credit card? Points or whatever. Is you absolutely right? You know, yeah, like a hotel card or whatever. Yeah, cash in the bonus points. Well, I don't have the right sound effects, but is use a travel credit card on the list? You should do the applause for you. There we go. (laughs) Yes. Okay. There you go. Now you're you're legions of fans. Do you use that, Paula? Do do you do you use a travel credit card, Len? I certainly do. Yes, that's my main. You know, and it's funny, I, I drew a blank, <laughs> and that's my main thing. You know, all of my trips, I, you know, the Honeybee and I, we go to Hawaii almost almost every year. Last year, obviously, it was interrupted. Um, but and when we go, we go on courtesy of the hotel whose credit card we have. And I'll just say it, it's a Marriott credit card. So we rack up enough points uh, almost every year to have a complete week stay there. Paula, you use one too? I do, yes. I use, uh, I have an American Airlines credit card and then I have, actually that's that's my personal credit card. And then my business card, I get cash back, which is, you know, cash. So, Seth had a good one who's hanging out with us today. Hey, Seth, I just saw Seth in uh, Nashville at Podcast Movement. Paula, you met Seth as well. Seth says to use the companion fare, which is very similar through uh, Southwest Airlines, right? Uh, good stuff. We get it. We also also get companion fares through American Airlines and through. I have an American Express where I have one with Delta. Oh, gee, I know you use travel points. I do. Uh, everything goes on our Amex card, and um, that's convertible into uh, travel credits. And uh, we've got the hotel ones as well. So. Yes, big believer in the points. Well, because Len's in last place, he got to pick off the easy one. Paula, you're in second, which means you go second. What's another one on this list? Ooh, so this is, I guess what's challenging is that if the title of the article is 22 Secret Ways, then... <laughs> They're not that secret, are they? Then I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to search for something that's non-obvious. Obvious enough that the writer would have thought of it, but non-obvious enough that it would go under the headline of secret. Oh, these are obvious. Oh, I'll, they're obvious? Yeah, I'll get rid of these. I'll get rid of that. These are all obvious. Mm, okay. Um, well, most obvious thing I can think of, uh, use uh, aggregator websites, discount aggregator websites to look for hotel deals, car rental deals, airfare deals. Use 
aggregator websites. Is that on the list? Okay, so the judges had a problem with that. There's a few, by the way, that involve uh, aggregator websites, but I'm going to tell you the one that we gave you, Paula. The, the, the one that we gave you is, is booking blind for rock bottom rates. So these, these sites like Hotwire, if you use a site like Hotwire, that type of an aggregator, you can get huge, huge discounts. In fact, I remember when my kids were in swimming, uh, we had this huge swim meet in Indianapolis, and I, I had no idea Hotwire existed. And a friend of mine said, hey, so what are you staying for this uh, this room at the Crown Plaza right downtown? And I said, 125 That's what the rate is. He goes, I paid 39 bucks for his family. It's a big, big difference using using a, a blind uh, aggregator. Yeah, let me if I can jump in because I, I, you know, I did oh boy, five or six years ago, I actually did a one of my studies where I compared like orbits to Expedia and some of the other aggregators, and I found basically that there was very, there was no difference between the charges and the aggregators. But yes, when you go to something like a Priceline or something like that, you can actually really score some good deals. Yeah, those but well, and Priceline because you're negotiating with them, right, Len? I mean, that's yeah, that's right. the key. I think yeah. if you don't negotiate through through Priceline, it might not be that great a deal. Uh, OG, use an aggregator. I do not. Nope. Well, I wonder if that one's on the list. Booking directly through the through the hotel itself. I don't hey, know. Let me bring up one more point. Well, I guess I do have some some points since I I guess when it comes to aggregators too. Um, if you like getting points at for staying at a hotel, a lot of times the hotels will not give you your points if you've booked through an aggregator website. So keep that in mind as well. They'll only give you the points if you book directly with them. So that's, that's one more thing. Yeah, I that's not the hard way. Yeah, especially yeah, if you're collecting points, that's good. But yeah. I use Hotels.com sometimes, and they have their own aggregator uh, point system. So you book 10 stays, and the 11th one, you get the, uh, I think it is the uh, median cost of all the rooms put together uh, as a free stay, you know, or that much off your next stay uh, at, a, at a hotel. All right, OG, Len, and Paula picked off the two easy ones, but there's still 20 left. What are you thinking? So uh, I have I've 20, 20 things that, uh, what, what are we trying to do? What's the game again? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Where are we at? 20, 20 things that, uh, I've got 20 left of things to save, save money on traveling. I'm going to say- uh, Secret travel tra- hacks. Secret travel hacks, okay. Uh, don't travel- during peak times. So I guess to save money, we would turn that around and say travel at off peak times, travel at off peak times. Final answer. This is where it's bad that there's wasn't number one. This is, this is where it's bad that there's, that there's so many of them is travel and off peak times on there. Boy, there's a couple of them on hero G that it could have been, but that one we're going to go with stay in hotels during off season. So when other people don't want to go stay in hotels during off season, we're going to give you that one. Um, okay. Do you do that? You go to places in seasons when, when most people don't go. We did that last year in Vermont, stayed in Vermont in the middle of summer near the ski resort where, you know, the uh, apartment we stayed in for a month, three times more expensive had we had it in ski season versus having it in the summer. And it's still beautiful in Vermont in the summer. I've not done the Vermont summer trip. Um, we're kind of stuck because we got kids still. So we, uh, our travel is definitely going to be on peak, sadly, uh, uh, at this moment. Yeah, that's a tough thing about traveling with kids. That's what we did. Oh, gee, we just got rid of the kids. Four years, four years left on one. Paula, you go off peak? I do, but it's largely because it's not because I'm deliberately trying to go off peak. It's because the way in which I book, like, plan, desire and plan and book trips has nothing to do with what it, it tends to be unconventional in the first place. <laughs> It's because Paula doesn't do homework at a time. She's like, is it, is it cold in Antarctica? <laughs> well, it's like I don't go to typical um, tourist destinations. For example, right before COVID, um, I went to Ljubljana in Slovenia. And uh, I mean, sure, more people go there in the summer than they do in the winter. But it's not it's, – it's not Paris. You know, it's not a yeah. – a, yeah. Common tourist destination. Yeah. 
Well, and that could be a, that could be on here too. I would think go to places other people don't go, but we don't know, do we? Could be. We don't know. Maybe. <laughs> so at the end of round one, the exciting round one, different than I think the last time we did this, we played almost the entire game show, and I think the score was like one zero zero because the the thing was so bad. This one, Len has won. Paula has one. OG has one. We're tied going into the second round of round one. We'll play four rounds total. So OG kick off another one point round. We'll go in reverse order this time. Uh, what else is on our list? Seeker travel hack number two, courtesy of yours truly, has definitely has to be buy your airline tickets in advance, like way in advance. Is buy your airline tickets way in advance on there? I'm getting my my sound effects all mixed up doing this live. But not only that, OG, not only was it in advance, theirs was a little larger. It was buy your tickets at the right time. So it doesn't even have to be in advance was one half of it. The other half was look at the best days of the week. And, and the P shares a few different days uh, in the middle of the week generally are better days to book your, your tickets. And then on the weekends, and most people are thinking about travel and they automatically go to their device and book up a trip on a plane. They jack up the price during those times. So all the above. So I got it right. Okay. Nice. <laughs> that, that's all you mark care it, about, isn't mark, it? Mark it down. That's it. Two to one to one. He just heard blah, 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 blah. I'm right, right? <laughs> so what's what's the end of that? Right. Uh, Len, how about you? Do you pay attention to the day of the week? Um, for, for when I try, for when I fly? For when you book. Oh, for when for, I book. You know, the, I can't even remember. There is a rule. What day was it? Thursday? Is Thursday the best day to fly? Tuesday. 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 Now, we're not talking about the day to fly. I don't know if that's on here, but we're talking about the day that you book. The day no, you go I, on the computer and book. No, I, you know what? I, no, I'm not even aware. I, no, I don't. It's probably on the weekend. If when I, whenever I've done my, my booking, I will do, I will say this though. I do book and I don't know, this is probably a disadvantage. Honestly, I book way, way in advance, which I've probably screwing myself. If I think about it, I probably should wait to the last minute and get those last minute deals. But the, the problem with that is there's that uncertainty bug, you know? So, uh, you know, me, Mr. Low risk, I just like to book it and be done with it. According to a CheapAir.com survey, it says that for a domestic trip, you should get your tickets 21 to 115 days before the trip. Ticket prices during that window are going to be within 5% of its lowest price. And for an international flight, Len, to your point, book the trip at least six months in advance, according to the points guy. I'm a le- I do it, a le- which is the absolute maximum that I, I believe you can do it. I, I, I book 11 months in advance my airfare, which is I'm, that's probably stupid. I know I'll, I'll, all everybody in the audience there is probably going, "What an idiot!" But but that's what I do. They say that regardless. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. OG. <laughs> nice pull. They also say, by the way, for cruises, it's not the same. That uh, last minute deals have not completely dried up, but there's not as many as there used to be. So you may find sales two to three years in advance, like book way ahead, so they know that they've got these rooms full. If you want to book a cruise, book it. Book it way ahead. Have any of the three of you done a cruise? Nope. I get. That, I get uh, that's that thing that you float around on and get uh, stomach viruses at. Right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll pass. That's what they're known for lately, apparently. All right, uh, OG is on the board of point number two. Put some pressure on Len, or no? Put some pressure on Paula. Sorry. Paula, I'm so used to you being the last. I thought that, <laughs> I thought it was Len's oh, turn. Oh, wow. Sorry. Well, I can see my talents are valued here. <laughs> All right. Is it my turn? It then? is your turn. All right. I'm going to say uh, join, f- like for, for car rentals, like join the car rental rewards program and, and take advantage of car rental rewards uh, and mm. loyalty programs and deals that they offer. Join the Car Rental Rewards Program. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's a bad deal, though. No. I mean, I think that's a... I thought that was pretty good. Oh, thank you. Thank it, you. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was a fine one. Do you... Same n- frequent flyer miles, too, right? Join the frequent flyer mile, right? 
sure. I should shut up. Maybe I should shut up. Maybe I should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the frequent flyer miles goes along with the travel credit card. Okay. I mean, frankly, yeah, okay. I do. But the, the but the, but the, but the, uh, uh, I don't belong to one of those, but every time Paula that I stop at a car rental counter, I think, why don't I belong to these? And I have a friend that does, and he gets all kinds of perks. Like he, he you know, they pull the car up for him. They do all kinds of he he picks the car while he's online ahead of time. So he, he, you know, there's that big long line. He avoids the entire line. Do you belong to any of those? Uh, I don't, but same deal. I I know someone who does, and I I watched the process of how easy it was to rent a car. Um, you know, c- compared to somebody like me who isn't a part of that. And that was what gave me the idea of, wow, I should really be taking advantage of this. No, and I don't know, OG, to bring you into this conversation, I, I usually think that uh, I'm going to score a better deal if I go through one of those aggregator sites. I always feel like I go to like Avis.com and I get a worse deal than I do if I go to, you know, Priceline is an example. Well, um, uh, remind me to talk to you about this offline because you are a member of all the... <laughs> <laughs> clubs uh, you just apparently don't know that you are <laughs> apparently it's that's a stacking benjamin's perk i don't know that is a perk that uh, that you have that wait a minute hold on a second my hr guy's telling me i am a member <laughs> uh yeah i mean some of this stuff is is time versus you know versus money uh and the guarantee of having something versus not we were traveling to Florida, uh, we went on did the beach vacation a couple of weeks ago, uh, at the beginning of summer and all the uh, stories about uh, car rentals and not having enough and all this other sort of stuff had me a little concerned. So because of being a member of both of these, they allow same day cancellations. I booked two cars at two separate places and then just canceled the other one. Once I was assured of getting one. Very clever. Very clever. Boy, that's, that's a, I had a better chance of getting it. It still wasn't guaranteed, but, you know, a better shot. It's, it's so important now because how many times are you hearing those stories, right? Not getting a car. There's only like a, a thing that you could do to travel, you know, like summon a car, like a car summoner device where you're just like, I need to go somewhere. And you could get out a magical device that you had in your pocket and you could press a button. And you would tell that thing like where you wanted to go, and then magically, <laughs> shortly thereafter, someone would arrive and go take you to that place. And if be- if only somebody would create that, and have somebody pull a name Tamika that picks you up to go meet uh, Mark Cuban. Yes, and and somebody by the name of Joe would make sure to remember to tell Mark Cuban uh, that Tamika says hi, which <laughs> Tamika was very nice I. of you. Tamika gave us that fact, yes, and I shared it. No, listen to my name dropping, Paula. Did did we tell you guys we met Mark Cuban? Yeah. Uh, you, I thought you were name dropping Tamika, the Uber driver. Well, I, both. Why did it doesn't have to be either or, does it? Uh, <laughs> Megan, by the way, hanging out with us, said uh, maybe book it off peak hours like three a.m. I think Megan, I think you're correct there too. I think there's a day of the week that makes sense. I believe that day is uh, Thursday, and then I also think that. Uh, booking during the times when they're less busy and nobody else is booking, I think you got a better shot. All right. Uh, OG has the lead going into the halfway stretch unless Mr. Penzo ties him up right here. Len, no pressure, but uh, what do you think? Well, I'm afraid this isn't going to – how many? There's 22. I'm afraid this isn't going to be on there. Um, But it's – and and it's going to make me sound like a one-trick pony, but I'm going to do it. It's about – I'm going to say – Oh, would they have this one? Because because my cousin does this. He my co- my cousin who's um my cousin Kev the CPA who's a little older than me and uh, but we think alike. But but when he goes to Europe all the time, he stays in unconventional places. So he doesn't stay in hotels. He stays a lot. He stays in places like when he went to Italy. He stayed in convents and under you know, a bridge the, yeah the hostels and in a van like down by I mean, the no, river really cool <laughs> yeah a back, tent by back the of river a pickup the, truck under <laughs> underneath overpasses but no so i'm gonna say um i guess they would say this don't stay in a hotel stay look elsewhere to stay other than hotels don't stay in a hotel is that there <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I will tell you though, Len, I think you're right. I think that, well, in the longer, one. the longer you stay in one place, I found that Airbnb has uh, charges that if you're only staying for a night or two, really make it difficult for, for it to compare with a hotel. But if, man, if you're there for a, a week, two weeks, three weeks, 
staying staying at an Airbnb or a, or a VRBO, a Verbo. Yeah. Is it? Wait, wait till my cousin hears about this one. He's gonna he's gonna not believe that either. But oh well, it is what it is. Apparently, bring your tent to vacation. <laughs> not not on this not on this person's list. Well, that's that sucks. And we've reached halftime. Let me give the amazing score. OG leading the way with two. Paula has one. Len has one. But you know what we're doing the second half of this? We are raising the stakes. We're going to two points for the next round. And then our producer just told me we're going to three points for the last round. Joe, Joe, what's amazing to me is that OG is probably the least qualified person on this panel to have (laughs) money-saving travel hacks. And he's in the lead. (laughs) OG's like, how do I spend more and travel? Right. Hey, I think Paul and I had good ones there. We just didn't get any credit. I thought so, too. I agree. So we're going to break for some trivia, and we'll be back with the second half of this. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And in honor of National Radio Day, yep, that's today, we're actually thinking about the great radio shows of the past. If you didn't know this by now, a lot of our show was modeled after some of Joe's old-time radio favorites. As if we needed more evidence that Joe's an old guy. And you're excused if you're under 80 and don't recognize these. But if you just take a little bit of Abbott and Costello and add in some Burns and Allen and then mix in some Tonight Show, boom, you got Stacking Benjamins. Which reminds me of today's trivia. No radio personality was more important or more famous than Jack Benny, according to Joe. On his famous Jack Benny program for the entire 23 years it aired, Jack always said he was the same age. So, Len Paula OG, how old did he say he was? I'll be back with your answer faster than you can Google. Who the hell is Jack Benny? I know Paula did that the first time we brought up Jack Benny. How long ago was that, Paula? Like six and years ago? It, it was a few years ago, but I did Google who was Jack Benny, and then I read the, uh, the first line of the Wikipedia entry aloud into the show. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And, and, uh, and it's been fried in her brain ever since. So I, I still think it's obscure, but that's just me. The Jack Benny's obscure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've never heard the name in my life. Have, so. have no idea. So he no was on idea. for 20, how many years, Doug? Uh, 20, 23 years. Just an early radio guy. How long did he like early radio guy as in like the 1800s earlier i don't know when the radio came out even well that's 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 going to be the question then part of it how old did he always say he was we start with the person in in last place so we've got len in last paula in in second og in first i'm sorry that means og goes first og yeah jack benny this mythical creature from the past how how old was he how old was he or how old did he say he was? how old did he say he was for 23 years in a row 23 years in a row and we don't get to know like any other context of this. Like, was this like in the early two thousands, late nineties? I'm going to say that he said he was, uh, I need some strategy here. Let's say that he said he was 49 years old. He said he was 49. Paula. So here's my thinking is, he would have to give an age that was young enough that he would continue to have at least a 23-year career afterwards. And he would have to be old enough that he wouldn't want to advertise that he was getting older. So I'm going to say 38. 38. All right, Mr. Penzo. This is a weird one where you get the, you get the last guess. And we have no Len. Yeah, he's off of Fireside. And uh, he's here. I can see him. And he actually says he hears us. He's texting me right now. He says 39 is. <laughs> is the, so so even though you can't hear him, he still knows how to Chelsea, Brent, and Paula by, <laughs> by, by going one higher. I, I wonder if we had him here, we'd be able to see exactly uh, why he went higher instead of lower. We don't play that way, though. We'll let you know here in just a second who's right. Well, stackers, pay off your credit card in full like you should every month. If so, you want to hear something amazing? Discover matches all the cash back you earn on your credit card at the end of your first year automatically with no limit on how much you can earn. How amazing is that? 
In fact, it's even more amazing because of all the places where Discover's accepted. 99% of places in the U.S. that take credit cards. So when it comes to Discover, get used to hearing yes more often. Learn more at discover.com slash yes. 2021 Nielsen Report. Limitation supply. At T-Mobile for Business, unconventional thinking means they see things differently. So you can focus on building your stack where some see another small town. T-Mobile sees businesses in need of connectivity. So they built the largest 5G network to cover cities, towns, including Texarkana and the most interstate miles in between. Where some see a color and a queue, they see an opportunity for experts to provide real-time solutions. Where some see another virtual meeting, they see 5G enabling wireless real-time translations to help your businesses succeed almost anywhere you work. Their unique approach has made T-Mobile for Business the leader in 5G, number one in customer satisfaction, and a partner who includes benefits like 5G in every plan. So you get it all without trade-offs. Unconventional thinking, it's better for business. T-Mobile for Business. Open Signal Awards. T-Mobile is America's fastest 5G network USA. 5G user experience report, July 2021. Capable device required. Coverage not available in some areas. Some uses may require certain plan or feature. See T-Mobile.com for J.D. Power 2020 award information. Visit JDPower.com forward slash awards. OG kicked it off with 49. Sounds like you went old. Says the guy that's three years older than that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Paula, 38 years old. If he said 21, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good because I've captured the entire downside. That's right. And Len then took the middle. I've got him on speed. Dial. I'm going to interpret for, te- for Len. How many opportunities do I get to interpret for Len? This is going to be fantastic. Uh, uh, Len said he knows it, that he knows it. Well, does he know it? Doug, you ready to give us our answer? Here we go. Hey there, stackers. In an effort to go from 1930s inspiration with old-time radio stuff to something slightly more modern, I've been advising the gang on their YouTube channel, their Instagram page, and TikToks. When OG asked me what a TikTok was, I knew it was going to be a long uphill battle. But the biggest problem I'm running into, I mean, have you seen these guys try to dance? Sorry, but the thought of Joe and OG learning a choreographed dance might be the worst. Wait a minute. The funniest, that would be the funniest thing I have ever thought of. And you thought the movie White Guys Can't Jump was bad? This would be way worse. How many times do you want to see Joe do the sprinkler over and over and over again? I mean, seriously, it's the dude's only move. But hopefully, now it's clear why this group and podcasts are a match made in heaven. On that note, let's get back to our trivia. The question was, how old did Jack Benny always say he was on his famous Jack Benny program? The show debuted in 1932, spanned 23 years, growing and developing as it progressed, never admitting to being a minute over 39. Jack Benny billed himself as stingy and vain, making special note of his talent for playing the violin. His character was known for being incredibly cheap. Yep, he'd get along just fine with this crew. And with that, Chelsea Brown, I mean, Len (laughs) is our winner. Wow. And Len is giving me a hooray for me. Yes, hooray for me. I get that. Yeah. Len, you're welcome. Yeah, the old guy wins the old guy trivia right there. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, congratulations, Mr. Penzo, on, on that big win. Good work, man. And we're on to the second half of this competition. If you're joining us brand new, hanging out with us on Fireside, where we're doing this live. By the way, if you're not with us live and you hear sound effects like laughter or uh, clapping, that's our audience. We we didn't insert a laugh track. We have the ability to do that, like applause and stuff. But uh, nope, that's the fact that we're hanging out with some other stackers today. So let's do this. Round three, we're on now of four. And the score at halftime, OG has two. Paula has one. Len has one, and uh, we go back in the order we were in before, which, Len, you're kicking off round three first. By the way, second half of this is brought to you by Magnify Money. Len Penzo, you know what happens? 
when you go to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. Yeah, you get the best in class when you go ahead and look for places like getting your best savings accounts and all your interest rates and all those kind of good things. So go to magnify money and 92%, is that what it is? 92% of uh, everybody uh, works out, comes out much better if they go through magnify money, right? 92% of all the banks, brick and mortar and online banks rated head to head at magnify money. Is that correct? Did I get a point for that? Sadly, we can't count that one, but that was awesome. <laughs> that, that was that was way better than Gwen last week going, you're going to tell me, Joe. Yeah, nice, nice, helping me with the ad read. But, Mr. Penzo, let's play for points now. Two points this time, which will give you the lead. Uh, travel hack to save money. Yeah, I'm gun shy now because I thought that last one was a really good one. Um, there's, th- there's also okay, me, some, there's I think. Tw- there's got to be. How what? about, how about, how about like when you're there, use Use public tra- – the, use the subways and use the, use the buses, public travel, transportation. Use public transportation. Is that on there? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. I will tell you, when I go to New York, um, I, I have friends that go to New York, as an example, or go to other cities, go to Paris, and they take, they take uh, taxis everywhere. Uh, I, I take the subway just about everywhere. And Len, to your yeah. point, you save so much money. Oh my God. The, like in your, if you're in DC, Washington, DC, oh my God. The, I, I mean, and there's other cities with great subway system, but oh my gosh. I mean, that's the only way to go. Yeah. Yeah. That one should be on there too, but it's not, by the way, uh, lots of our stackers hanging out with us are also giving hints. I don't know if they're good or not but well i know they're good let's put it that way i don't know if they're going to match these ones but if you're on the panel and you want to look at those just hit the bubble over anybody's head guys and you can take a look at what uh if you're stumped you can take a look there paula it's your chance to take the lead all right i'm going to roll the dice on this one because i think there's honestly it's probably a slim chance that it's on the list but it is a good tip and why not so i'm gonna say <laughs> I'm going to say get a National Parks Pass. Ooh, get a National Parks yeah. Pass. I have one of those. Do you have one of those? I had one of them. It recently expired. I think it expired in February or something. By the way, for people that you know like to travel and they like the outdoors, I've actually given those as gifts. And that is a great gift to give somebody. Give them the gift of future travel and sending me pictures from all these cool places. I think if you were 65, it, 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 and I think it might have changed, but there was a time there when if you were 65 or older, I think it was you could have a lifetime pass for like 10 bucks. So you're I saying Joe could save a lot of money. I'm right here, man. But that is on my vision board, Doug, for the, for the future. Is get a National Parks Pass on here. <laughs> It's a fantastic tip, Paula. Yeah, you know, I, I suspected it would go that way, but I, I wanted to throw it out there. Yeah, well, that's why I like doing these, because I often like the ones that you guys give over over some of these. And the ones they've had aren't bad. C- can't believe it. Uh, OG, rounding out the second round, and you can take a commanding lead here. Ways to save my secret ways to save money while traveling. Uh, let's go with... Uh, find, find a, find a hotel that, that includes stuff with your stay, like uh, breakfast or something yeah, like there that, you, go. That's you know, a uh, free breakfast. Uh, good one, OG. How do I yep. want to say this? Good one. What, what are they called? Complimentary. Yeah. Complimentary breakfast included. Final answer. So you want don't the, get the bar. Don't get, don't <laughs> get the bar too. the happy hour. Yeah. You get the, like the Drury in. My, yes, well, my, my brother's ticket thing is. So you guys uh, yes, don't drink tickets at the Drury. Yes, absolutely. Yes, that's it. Is drink tickets at the Drury on there? <laughs> it's actually not the Drury, but Drury. And if you'd like to sponsor the show, Joe at stackybenjamins.com because we got your back. <laughs> uh, but but it is find all inclusive deals. So OG the 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 judge went with that. Where if you can get an all inclusive that adds maybe that that. Uh, Waffles shaped like Texas, right? I know you're big on that one, uh, or other things at the resort. That's that's on the list. Paula, you look for all inclusive stuff. I do not know. Uh, I don't really. I'm not a fan of packaged like 
made for you experiences. To me, part of the appeal of travel is figuring it out step by step, hour by hour. But then you know if it's all packaged ahead of time that at the very least it won't stink. To me, the the joy of travel is the spontaneity. So if something is prepackaged, it takes that away. Is the ability to let it stink. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Kyle's got a good one here. He says one meal a day at the all you can eat buffet. There you go. If they got a sizzler on site, Kyle, you've <laughs> you've you've absolutely got it. All right. So OG now has four. Len and Paula have one. I think that means we have a winner, but we still but we we, we gotta go do this, do this uh last route. How do you how do you do that? How do you make that exciting? I don't Well hold on now. If I get th- this is this Double round's worth three points. Oh you're right. Yeah. You, but math, not my strong suit when we're doing this live. Holy cow. It's the exciting third round where we could go to bonus time. How about that? <laughs> Len has one. Paula has one. OG is four. And to keep this dramatic, we're going to go ahead and have Len, you lead off the last round for us, my friend. Well, I've, I've kind of, I've lost faith in this list because I think I've given some good ones. I think Paul has given some good ones. I don't think OG's given any good ones, but all his were on the on the list. So yeah, he's dealing a lot with. Uh, this is mostly <laughs> about uh, hotels, airlines, cruises, and um, how and when you book or how and when you travel. Um, well, I I'm just gonna say because I'm totally. There's some out here in the live audience if you want to try them. I, well, I, I've got one here. I, I doubt it's going to be on. We're going to say because you know what? It's darn it. It's a good one. Instead of eating at restaurants, why don't you go to the go to the grocery store and buy your food there and 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 cook it yourself? Strong. That's a strong one. Thank I like you. It. Thank you. Eating at the grocery store, bringing your own food on vacation. Oh Do you know how, mag- how magnanimous OG was there supporting? It's easy to, to root for your enemy when they're Yeah, when you're so depths. far ahead. Yeah. You're like, no, that's a good one. Keep trying. I Come like on, the effort. To throw somebody else under the bus. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, I don't like that one, Len. I mean, I mean, I do if I'm staying someplace for a while, but part of the fun for me is going and trying out the local establishments. Sure, you could do that too. But I don't, I don't know, you know, that that's fine too, but I but you're Len looking says to making s- mac and ways cheese to in, sa- the, in the ways uh, to hotel save save money. It, it was about saving money when you travel, right? That's true. Secret travel savings hacks. Bring your own mac and cheese. All right. Len's I like Len's like so I was in I was in Paris and I'm, <laughs> and I'm in my hotel room with my little bunts of burger making macaroni and cheese. Well, what? you go to a bakery, you pick up, you go to a, you go to a nice bakery and a deli, you pick up some no, that's good. baked bread, you pick up some, right? I had a great experience doing that uh, in Paris, actually. Paula, you were going to say? Oh, I had one time in Paris. So this is 2014 and I was there alone and I got pickpocketed and lost my wallet. And so I had to have my, uh, my then boyfriend uh, mail me like a new credit cards, new everything. But it took, of course, several days. It took two days for uh, the FedEx to come through. And so during that time, the only way that I could eat was by going to the little, the included continental breakfast from my hostel, which fortunately the hostel was prepaid. And I would fill my bag with like <laughs> breakfast bread. <laughs> and then I would just like nibble on my rations throughout the day. <laughs> she's, she's rationing out the, the croissant. Yeah, that's exactly what I did for like two and a half days in Paris. Just rationed out like stale bread. You could have sang on the subway. (laughs) I couldn't even get onto the subway because I didn't have money to like, unless I jumped the turnstile. That's true. Right. Right. (laughs) Yeah. So hostel was prepaid. So I just stayed there. I walked everywhere and I rationed the all-inclusive breakfast. Well, Paula, we'll keep the spotlight on you because while Len had another great one, it wasn't on the list. (laughs) And you can tie OG here. So there are two that are running through my head, one that I think is better and the other that I think is actually on the list. The one that I think is better would would relate to pets and pet policies, but I don't think that's going to be on the list. Um, And so the one, the worst one, oh, wait, but I've forgotten it. Hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, related to how and when you book. Oh, uh, oh, yes. The worst one that's more likely to be on the list is um, don't check luggage. Bring only carry-ons so that that way you don't have to pay any baggage fees. 
And if you do check luggage, do it if you've got the credit card. But why would I, you bring why would you bring dead meat on onto a when you're traveling? Dead meat? What? Like, carry, on? Just, carry on? Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got to give yeah, at least it. I got to. At least I've got. Now to, I get to uh, use this one. Contribute something to this podcast. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> is avoid baggage fees on the list? <laughs> now, while I think it's on the list, I agree with both of you. I think that saves you a lot less money than some of the ones that we gave. Seriously, okay. seriously, this is this is not a game of predicting what the actual best travel tips are. It's a game of predicting what an underpaid freelance writer right. would <laughs> vomit in order to reach their word count. How they can get it done in a Ouch. reasonable amount of time and get paid. Tell us how you really feel, Paul. <laughs> oh, that was the gentle version. All right, OG, this is for the win. Secret travel hacks. Oh goodness. Paul had mine. I was, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna. That was a layup. I was gonna have that as my like slam dunk. There's still some juicy ones here. So, covered hotels, booking early, booking uh, using reward points. Using By the way, while you're thinking, Kyle had one uh, here hanging out with us live on Fireside. He said, "Get even cheaper airfare to hide in your friend's luggage. So not even pay your luggage fee, hide in somebody else's luggage. May or may not." work not not sure we're advocating that one kyle but that one was funny uh i'm gonna say um i'm trying to think of like a comparison shopping uh flight thing i want to go back to flying comparison shopping but um uh something like compare how do i want to say this don't don't go where you want to go go where it's cheaper so like if you're gonna fly to dallas take a look at flying into texarkana instead (laughs) probably cheaper (laughs) Go go see historic Texarkana. Is that on the list? <laughs> nice job. Be flexible. So ridiculous. Be flexible about where you want to go is is on the list. Okay. All right. That's that is the most BS way of getting to that ever, but okay. <laughs> nice. nice job. And OG wins the day, and for that we give him the OG is a travel. Nice job, man. Good, 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 good work. OG with a big win. Yes. I love the, somebody gave him the, somebody. Yes, there was three claps there. Very good. I was going to say somebody in the audience gave you the golf clap, OG. Yay. That was fantastic. Because travel, because saving money while traveling is definitely my middle name. That, absolutely. At least traveling How does is that your fit on your name? driver's license. That must be, that must look terrible on your driver's That's license. Abbreviated. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, let me give you the others here before we uh, before we finish up this segment. Fly when nobody else wants to was on the list. So you could, we talked about booking, and you guys brought up flying when people don't want to fly, like going on a Tuesday or a Thursday. And actually, Megan had that one. Uh, I believe it was Megan that did that that had that one. Somebody said it. Uh, b- Sign up for the email alerts, so they often give uh, discounts and emails. Or something like that. Yep. If you're going at the very last minute, consider a vacation package because a lot of times vacation packages sit. And if you're going at the very last minute, you might be able to score a very cheap package. I know somebody that got uh, a nice trip to Europe from the Midwest for like two hundred and fifty dollars for two people, and it was amazing. And they didn't have to sit through a timeshare presentation. It was just it was going to go to waste. So. Add a free destination. So they talk about specifically how, I'm not sure if it still happens anymore. Does does uh, uh, Icelandic Air still give you very cheap uh, passage across the Atlantic if you stop in Iceland? Because we got that a couple of years ago. Have you guys done that? I had a bunch of friends who did that. So pre-COVID, that was really popular. I don't know how that's changed since COVID, but that was like everyone I knew was going to Reykjavik. It was a cheap stop. I mean, it was a no brainer. Why not? You stop halfway, you break up the travel and you get this fantastic country to visit. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was a good one. Book directly. And this is one Megan had, by the way, book directly through the hotel website. Don't use the aggregator, Uh, not just, and you guys said it 
but nobody brought it up when it was their turn. Uh, keep tracking lodging rates even after you book. So you book a rate, keep tracking them, and you can actually find if there's deals later. Uh, pick up the phone. You'll get more if you pick up the phone, uh, possibly. In fact, I've seen a couple of pieces online talking about upgrading your room by calling after you book. Fight against resort fees. I think, Paula, was it you at uh, FinCon in Orlando? You were, like, fighting the Orlando resort fee? No, no. In fact, the opposite. I never fight the resort fee, and I'm annoyed by the people who do. Why? Because why, why? Oh. you love the resort fee? Um, because I, I'm annoyed by the people who are, like, you know, fighting with some underpaid employee who's making 10 bucks an hour, um, trying to put themselves through school, and then you've got some, like, customer who's upset about a resort fee that they don't even have, you know, that, that the employee doesn't have any control over, like just pay the freaking fee and spare the employee from having that unpleasant experience while they're on the clock. Do you know what my thought is about that? I think that the institution still is to blame because I think that if they just wrap the, like these baggage fees, why don't they just wrap it in the price of a ticket? Why do I have to pay more for a second bag? Just, yeah, ju- yeah. just make your ticket X amount of money and there oh, it yeah. is. I, I, I absolutely agree. The institution is to blame, but I'm annoyed by the people who then take it out on the lowest people on the totem pole. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, check airline vacation packages. Here's one that I don't know that I agree with. Defy hurricane season. That that, that might not always tried, work. I, we tried that on our Florida trip and left a day and a half early because of the fact that, uh, that I had... That, uh, hurricane was coming i had other friends that huddled down in a hotel while the hurricane went through and uh in cabo and that was not fun use a travel agent to book cruises and uh book a river cruise it said and i've had friends do river cruises and thought that was good so og takes home the bacon nice work but i've just i was shocked i was wading through that whole list i mean my number one travel hack wasn't on there which is where i just slip my parole officer a 50 before i leave it saves me a ton in lawyer fees <laughs> there, it, the there it is you got well, it i mean that's just yeah, it's just obvious. just just to make sure the little uh, the little uh, ring thing around your ankle doesn't work, your ankle bracelet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, just cover it in tinfoil. I've told you that a million times. <laughs> there it is. This whole show's covered in tinfoil. All right, let's see what's going on where all you guys live. We lost Len, and we don't have him back. So uh, go to lenpedzo.com and you're going to get all the hilarity that Len's award winning blog gives you. Uh, at least once a week. How often does Len post? Do I know how often Len posts? Len posts maybe Every twice a week, so three often. days a week. Len, what do you got coming up? He's trying to type really fast for me to tell me what's coming up. While I'm reading his, Paula, what's going on at Afford Anything? On the Afford Anything podcast, if you want to hear more of this guy, Joe Salcihai, and um, the wisdom, the wit and wisdom of Joe, you can find that every other episode of the Afford Anything podcast which you can download on Spotify, Pandora, anywhere where you, YouTube, anywhere you download podcasts. Anywhere, find your podcast or distributed. The Afford Anything, the amazing Afford Anything show. Oh, gee, what do you got going on this weekend? Oh, goodness, lots of stuff. Kids are in school finally, and uh, so we got that going on. Uh, it's just uh, kind of get back into the grind. It's fall. I got a lot of stuff going on in the fall, a little after school activity basically every weekend. Until Christmas. So busy, busy, busy. That is. It's the busy time of year. Doug, how about you, my friend? What, I'm supposed to be doing things? <laughs> that's, that's exactly the answer. I'm staying as horizontal as possible. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Keep, keep, keep in the heart beating. Len, by the way, says the Len Penzo blog is not just for travel tips. You can see how great his travel tips were here since he, since he scored one point. Uh, why you shouldn't buy a corner lot is an article. Why wouldn't you want to buy a corner lot is the, is the thing that's out now. If you go to lenpenzo.com or the persistent itch.com, right, Len? All right. That's going to do it for today. Doug, you got it from here, man. What should we have learned today? So what should we have learned today? First, don't be afraid to get creative in order to save yourself money when traveling. There's always a better way to score some luxuries on the cheap. Second, if you travel with Len, be prepared to bring your own lunch meat and fruit cups and to stay at the Longshoreman's Barracks. That guy will do anything to save a buck. But the big lesson? Turns out, OG Moon walked his way through high school, so maybe don't judge a book by its cover.
bro, you are not the weakest link. To learn more about our guests and for more resources, you can head to our show notes page at stackingbenjamins.com. For more Paula Pant, check out the Afford Anything podcast. And to see what Len Penzo is up to, head on over to lenpenzo.com. This is Neighbor Doug reminding you to help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. Welcome to the after show. This is the part of the show that doesn't exist. Your hidden track. And the thing I've been wanting to talk about all day is uh, I had the privilege last week of partying with one Paula Pant from Afford Anything. Oh, that was not the name I thought you were about to say. <laughs> what, what name was but, I going to yeah. say? Uh, begins with an M and rhymes with Reuben. You mean the, 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 hey, did I tell you that I met Mark Cuban? Did I say that already? <laughs> I, I, think, I think I bragged about that enough. You and I did. We, we both did. Yeah, we both did. I've got, uh, on my Instagram, I've got some amazing pictures with Mark Cuban. As if oh, I you, don't, I do and too. you and I. I took I, the original one and then you, you had to go get a second one to one up me. Of course I did. I see years later on, just <laughs> you and Marky Mark. I've actually seen the original. Say what? I see the, uh, I'm looking online and all of a sudden I see just you and Marky Mark. I'm like, she went back for seconds. I sure did. <laughs> crazy. And it's a great photo too. It's a fantastic photo. But being new on, uh, being, uh, luckily in this platform, being one of the people, the uh, group that were asked to do this early, Paula and I were invited and, uh, oh gee, you had been invited too. had you gone. And so, <laughs> and so, and so, and so we're, we're standing Ooh, at this, moon. we're standing at this fireside event and, uh, uh, that's to meet, it's a meet and greet with Mark. So I think there's gonna be like hundred people there. There's maybe what, 20, 25 people there. Mm -hmm. And we're standing with a couple great guys, fantastic guys. And we're having a wonderful conversation, Paul and I and them and, and other people that our audience might know Gabby Dunn from bad with money was there and, uh, got to hang out with Gabby a little bit, but uh, then Mark and Fallon, the creator of Fireside, come in. And what was, of course, everybody turns and they see him. And he kind of makes his way around the world, saying, around the world, around the room, saying hi to people. There's food at the far end. He goes and he grabs a plate of food. And Paula, he makes a beeline over to us mm -hmm. and stands right in the middle of us and says, hey, can I, can I stand here and eat with you? And I'm like, yeah. screw, I'm like screw you, Mark. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, we were all standing around a table Whereas everybody else was just sort of mingling. Yeah. So boom, we had the table space and he, he, he looked like he was hungry. He looked like he hadn't eaten in a while. And well, he so said he, it uh, three times too. Yeah. He said, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm really hungry. Mm -hmm. Being rude. So he yeah. was just standing there with a plate of food. And, and so then he was talking to, to all of us. Yeah. I mean, it was much more of a hangout. There was, I mean, he seemed like the same guy you see on Shark Tank. I don't know. Paul, have you ever watched Shark Tank? I have never watched Shark Tank. You have no idea. But, but I learned that in the UK, it's referred to as Dragon's Den. Of course. Because mm -hmm. you got to rebrand everything. Sense. Yes. <laughs> so he- it's More uh, apropos. There's not a lot of shark killings in the oh, English channel. I if there are more dragon slayings? There. <laughs> yes, there are. Well, in old time, King Arthur in the round table. I thought you watched uh, Game of Thrones. I did watch Game of Thrones. Isn't there dragons in that? There are definitely dragons in that. And it's totally a documentary, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a movie about Westeros. <laughs> right. Well, that was not the story I was going to bring up, actually. I was going to bring up, maybe we'll tell a story another day. But, uh, oh, were you going to bring up you something you and I hanging out and uh, yes. a particular beverage? Yes, and that'll be uh, another that'll be another day. Ooh, uh, all right. For now, we just we just bragged. We went all braggy brag and told everybody we've, we've met Mark Cuban. <laughs> I have this really funny. I was reading this article on the New Yorker website about uh, uh, airplanes, 
and um, there was a, a com, uh, uh, one of those little comics, you know, they put in the, whatchamacallit, in the, in the magazine. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to send this to you so you can post it. I, I'm sure it's okay because it gives the credit here. And it's a guy standing in the corner with a single light bulb above him. And there's like f- four dudes around him, you know, and it says, hey, just a reminder that the first rule of Fight Club includes podcasting about Fight Club. <laughs> and I thought that was so awesome. <laughs> That's so true. Titus and Tate, a podcast from two obsessed basketball lovers. Do you think Milwaukee will attract free agents now? Like, I, like I mean, not even not even free agents, but players that are, are championship level player, like a not a, not a Jeff Green in particular, but those Jay Crowder type players. Yeah, yeah, are you're say, not saying I want to go. The, not those players specifically, but they're going to say I want to go play with the best player. Yeah, I want to be a part of that. That's yeah. what happened with Michael. More than just analysts and stats, Titus and Tate. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.